Here's our good friend, the Mitsubishi. Did a video on her about a year and a half ago. And now, we're coming over to work on the Goodman. Goodman has a refrigerant leak, not an evaporator, but on the condenser. I'm gonna go ahead and take all the refrigerant out of it. We'll take a look at the leak. All right, guys, I have my recovery stuff on. Taking the charge out of the unit, I got my little simple gauge on it. So we're gonna draw the refrigerant out of here. Then I'll put some nitrogen on it so we can locate the exact location of the leaks because there's a, you can see down in this area, it's pretty oily and at the base. The only leak found was here. So we're gonna double check everything and get to brazen. So I wanna put some nitrogen on it first and get the bubbles and tell the story. All right guys, I'm gonna put some nitrogen on it. We can identify our leak here a little bit better. Make sure we got the right spot and make sure there's no other leaks. So go ahead and start bleeding in there. Nitrogen will start going into the system. Then when we get about a couple hundred pounds on it, I will uh, try to find it with some bubbles. All right, guys, we're sitting at 200 pounds of pressure, which is more than the system pressure would be on a day like today, especially the day I found the leak. So we go down there to our pipe, and we see it way down here. There is our leak, tiny as it may be. Just a pinprick spot on that pipe. So we can braise that back up. It's actually a pretty easy spot to reach. What I'm going to do, is because there's some oil down here too, is I'm going to inundate these pipes with bubbles. Give it a few minutes to see if anything else develops. The leak detector couldn't locate it, uh, so it's probably not there. But it never hurts to you know, double check it. So there's our leak. I'm going to be brazing that thing up here shortly. And we should be good to go. I have been up and down our U-bins here in the area of the oil. The only leak I've come to is the one leak we saw before there. I've taken my mirror. We've gone along the back of each one. We know we hold the mirror back there. Check each one of them. So they've all been fine. I'll give it a couple more minutes. We'll take the nitrogen off of the system and I can begin brazing. It shouldn't take too long to braze it shut. I uh, really lay it on the elbow make sure it's brazed up real nice. Looks like a couple corroded spots or spots where it cracked during fabrication or something. So we'll, we'll seal it up nice and go ahead and pressure check it again. I took some emery cloth sandpaper and cleaned out the pipe a little bit and you can really hear it now. It's about, about to break through even more. So, we'll get rid of that. Right there. All right. I am putting nitrogen pressure on it again. I have finished my repair, laid the solder to it. Hopefully we're fixed up. Remembering to take the defrost sensor off. It's almost, it was on this U-bend here. And protect your switches behind there so you don't get hit by the flame. That's a high pressure switch. Um, make sure you protect your switches and wires that are passing through the area. Um, a little bit of the coil might be a little melted, I doubt it. It didn't really braise that long. We'll take a look at it. But it's not going to hurt anything. Alright guys, our pressure hasn't budged a bit. We're at 165 pounds. It's pretty much the entire contents of my nitrogen bottle. There are no bubbles to be found front or back on any of these tubes. So it looks like our brazing worked. I'm going to go ahead and put it in the vacuum and then we can recharge the machine. guys we have our DuPont Friant weighted in a liquid about eight pounds to go in there about two pounds so far there's the old Hillmore bag some of you guys have asked about this bag whenever I get a minute I'll make a video about it show you sort of how it's laid out and what I got in there but we are charging up right now and we are almost done all right guys we're looking at 200 pounds over about 70 pounds, which is right in line with where we should be today. It is a much warmer day than it was when I first came here. It is 60, 65 degrees, probably closer to 60 now, or even in the upper 50s. The day's kind of waning on. The sun's gone behind the house over here. And we are looking pretty good. Much better than we did the other day. The heat strips weren't functioning the other day. I had to replace the sequencer and the charge was slow. So it really wasn't putting out much heat at all, but now I think it should be real comfortable for our snowstorm that's going to come in tomorrow night. I will 
see you guys on the next one.